Hello, this is Dr. K Tina Cannon from Chenega State Community College and in this video I want to show you how to uh, convert from a percentile to a value and then from a value to a percent and then from a quartile to a percentile and then find a value. So um, we are going to go to our textbook first. If you go to Course Compass and we are in Unit 1, so I'm going to click the Unit 1 tab. And my textbook, I want to open it up and I want to go to the section that is on Measures of Relative Standing. So I'm going to click that. Now I'm going to go into the Multimedia Textbook, so I'm going to click this. And I want to close this window and let it open up the textbook. It will take just a second. Now, in the textbook, you will see several examples of the different topics. You need to make sure that you use your textbook to help you as you go along in the course. It's very b beneficial, and it gives several examples to help you out as you go through these. If you notice, when you do your homework, there will be a uh, tab on the right that actually uh, says that you can go to the textbook from the homework problem that you're working Okay, I want to go to uh, page 116, so I want to turn the page up here at the top, page 116. We'll make this larger so you can see this better. Okay, this section is dealing with percentiles, and uh, remember a percent is based on 100, and what happens is um, they have these things uh, written as P1, which one, means 1%, one the 1 percentile, um, all the way up P99, okay. Um, what we're going to be given uh, in this problem, they're giving us a table of values. Now I want you to make, you to notice they are all in order from the smallest to the largest. They're in ascending order, okay. So make sure that when you do these that all your values are in order. And they give you an example, and here's what they ask you to do. Um, this is a list of movie budgets. Now notice, these are in millions of dollars. So when you see 4.5, that not, does not mean $4.50, okay? <laughs> it's $4.5 million uh, budget. And it ranges from that to $225 million. Now in this particular problem, it tells us that there are 35 different uh, um, budgets that we're looking at. And what they ask you to do is find the percentile for the value of 29 million. So if we look at our table, they're asking us to find out what percentile of the movies are less than this value, or we could say what percentile are greater, okay? But we're just trying to find the percentile of this value, okay? There is a formula for this that you need to learn. And it's based on writing a fraction, where a fraction is your amount divided by your total. And then if you convert a fraction to a, a decimal and then to a percent, that's what you're actually doing here. You're taking that fraction, converting it to a decimal, then uh, changing it to percent by multiplying by 100. So in this particular case, when you try to find the percentile, you locate your value, and notice it says the number of values less than 29, okay? So if we count those, there's one, two, three, four, five, six values. There's six budgets that are less than $29 million, okay? And then there's six out of a total of 35. So I'm going to call up my calculator. And... Uh, Let's get out of this, okay. So if I do 6 divided by 35, I can convert that to a decimal. And then multiply by 100, which all that does is move the decimal over two places. Now I want you to notice what it says right here, round the result to the nearest whole number. So if we actually work this problem, we get a 17%. So what that's saying is 17% of the movies 
uh, movie budgets are less than 29 million. Now if we go to the next page you can see that they actually worked this out for you. Okay, And notice their interpretation. The budget amount of 29 million is the 17th percentile. This can be interpreted loosely. The budget amount of 29 million separates the lowest 17 percent from the highest 83. Now that's important as we go along that you comprehend that uh, when you uh, think about the total percentage, if you notice these things add up to 100%, but they're saying that score separates those. Okay. Now remember, you use, let me go back to the formula, you use this formula, the number of values less than x divided by the total when you are given a percentile and you want to find a value. Now we're going to go to another kind of problem and here's some some things that you need to know this on page 117 in your textbook. There are some notations that we're going to be using and there's a formula on page 117 at the bottom. It's your location formula for a value. Okay. And what happens is we know n represents the number of values in the whole whole table. Okay. Now k is going to represent the percentile. K is the percentile. So for instance, if it talks about the 25th percentile, K would be 25. Okay. L is the location formula. It is not the answer. When you plug this in, that is not telling you that's your value. Okay, that's the location. And notice what it says, locator that gives the position of a value. Okay. And then notice P sub K, K is your percentile, so they've already worked with this. Now here's what's happening. They have their same set of values that we used a few minutes ago, and they're asking you to find which value separates the top or the bottom 90% from the top 10%. Okay? We're trying to separate the the bottom 90 from the top 10. Okay? Now if we go back and look at our values, think about what this is looking like before this separated our tops or our bottom 17 from our uh, top 83 okay so you're actually given a value or a, in this particular case a percentile nice to find this location okay or you're given a value nice to find this okay so here's what happens um they're going to give you percentile ask you find the value Okay, the other one they gave you the value as you find the percentile. I may have said that backwards a few minutes ago. Okay, but with this, what happens is the K is that 90th percentile, 90. N is the number in my sample, so I had 35. So if we take out our calculator, and we know if we divide 90 by 100, it moves the decimal two places. Okay, so we have 0 0.9 times 35. So you get this number. Now there's something very important that you need to look at. Notice this is a decimal and I want to show you something. There is a flow chart on page 118 that leads you through something that you need to know. And what it is, it's how to go about rounding. And this takes a second sometimes for this to come up so 